Hugo Chavez saw himself as a revolutionary leader. He was a hero to many of Venezuela's poorest people, but a villain to opposition parties. They hated the friends he kept and the abuses of power they accused him of. This is how Hugo Chavez originally burst onto the world stage. In 1992, as an army colonel, he led a military coup, trying and failing to grab power after decades of more or less corrupt rule in Venezuela. Hugo Chavez was released after two years in jail and the young army officer built his popularity by denouncing the rottenness he wanted to replace. With these corrupt people, you have to take everything they've stolen away from them and put them in prison, not under house arrest. Put them in a cell and turn them into a public disgrace. That's necessary for Venezuela's moral recovery. And the soldier transformed himself into radical politician. Finally elected president in 1998, Hugo Chavez transformed Venezuela's politics and presidential dress. Supporters were ecstatic as key industries were steadily nationalised, including oil, source of the country's wealth. President Chavez used the money largely to fund massive health and welfare programmes. But many oil workers were dismayed, their bosses sacked, production steadily falling. In 2002, the whole country was embroiled in a general strike and Chavez was briefly pushed from office. But just two days later, after his supporters, mainly the poor, took to the streets, President Chavez was back in the palace. The president's very deliberate radicalism and his choice of friends made him enemies at home and around the world. His reliance on Cuba's Fidel Castro appalled those on the right. Alliance with Iran's President Ahmadinejad inflamed Washington. Using the